so welcome to this latest video on 162 maths and in this video we'll be going over a GCSE maths higher topic of simultaneous equations now before going through some exam questions I'll quickly go over what it is you need to revise in this particular topic and as always I'll include a copy of the questions that we go through in this video in a link in the description below for you to download and have an attempt at so you can test your prior knowledge now before we get started working through some questions related to simultaneous equations let's just have a quick overview over what it is you need to revise and what it is you need to be able to do now in terms of basic levels of simultaneous equations which appear on both the higher and the foundation you need to be able to solve two linear equations with two unknowns now for this you can either use the elimination method now the elimination method is basically where you have both the x and y's on one side and numbers on the other and then you then want to make the x's or the y's the same and then decide whether to add or subtract the equations leaving you with one letter and then you find the value of that letter and then respectively can then find the value of the other the substitution method is where you make both equations equal to y let's say and then you then once both equations equal to y you then make them equal to each other so for example if i had y equals 5x minus 3 and I had y equals, let's say, for 7x minus 10, then as they're both equal to y, I just make the two equations equal to each other. I then solve this equation for x. Once I found the x values, I then find the y values, and jobs are good in. Another type of question you need to be able to do is work with worded questions. Now, again, this is probably linked with two linear equations. It's unlikely this will ever come up involving a nonlinear equation. But basically, when you're translating a situation into an algebraic expression, which then turns into a simultaneous equation question, where this has proved common or where you may have seen these questions before is questions like if two adult tickets and two children tickets cost £45 and five child tickets and two adult tickets cost 46 pounds work out the price of three adults and one child so that would be a worded question where you translate the information into an algebraic ex uh, equation and then solve it simultaneously now then we start moving on to the higher now with this you need to be able to then work with one linear one non-linear and be able to solve them simultaneously now typically this can also involve using the elimination method or the substitution method but generally speaking, what you will find then is where in two linear equations, you end up with one set of solutions. So an X value and a Y value. When you've got one linear and one nonlinear, there is a chance that you may end up with two sets of coordinates. So where you've got an X, two X values and two Y values. But make sure that when you write your answers, that you are pairing your answers together. Then the last one is being able to work with solving equations simultaneously by using a graph. Now, if you've got two linear graphs, now excuse my drawing for this because I know my lines are not going to be straight. So if I have one line that's there and another line that's there, then where the solution would be is where the point meets. And this value here would give me my X value and that value there would give me my Y value. And if I've got one linear and one nonlinear, so let me just draw a parabola and let's say I draw a straight line, then this coordinate here would be one solution so that would be my x value that would be my y value and for this point here that would be my x value and that would be my y value so when you're solving some gra um, simultaneous equations graphically it's basically finding the coordinates of the intersection points of those lines whether it be as two lines or a curve in a line or in some weird places you can get this but it's more a level you can have a curve and a curve now other topics that are connected to simultaneous equations are substitution for obvious reasons coordinates because it can be related to a graph now if your equate if your question relates to a graph make sure you give your answer as a coordinate if it's not related to a graph then you can just write your x your y's your a's your b values however way you want but if it's related to lines on a graph or a, a graph or on a grid make sure you give your answers as coordinates it's also then linked with quadratics if you're dealing with one long linear questions also writing expressions if you've got worded questions plotting graphs equations of lines and circles which i've seen this come a lot more prominent the key thing with that last part is if you ever see the word intersection always think simultaneous equations
So without further ado, let's have a look at some exam questions. Now, again, if you're wanting a copy of these questions, all you need to do is just simply click on the link in the description below. So looking at question one, it says 3x minus 2y equals 11. If x equals 5, what is the value of y? So for this, all we need to do is to substitute x equals 5 into this expression. So I've got 3 lots of 5 minus 2y equals 11. So that becomes 15 minus 2y equals 11. I can take the 15 over to the side, so I end up with 2y equals minus 4, so y equals 2. Moving on to question 2, it says here are two simultaneous equations. Which pair of solutions satisfy both equations? Now, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this. You can either, by trial and error, substitute the numbers in and see if it works, or you could solve them simultaneously. But for one mark, it's entirely up to you which method you go for. But seeing as both we've got the same number of x's and the same number of y's, it should be relatively quite straightforward. So here I'm going to use the x's. So if I take away the x's, they disappear, but the y's will become 2y and that becomes 5. So I'm looking at y equals 2.5. Now there's only one set of solutions that has y equals 2.5. So that's going to be the correct answer. Moving on to question three, it says solve the simultaneous equation. You must show you're working out and do not use trial improvement. Now, this basically means you can't guess the numbers. So if you're there just thinking, oh, let's choose x equals one and y equals three, and hopefully it works, you've got to make sure you are showing some working out. So looking at this particular question, we can see we've got the same number of y's and the signs are the same, so we take away the two equations. So 2x take away x becomes 1x. The y's cancel each other out, and I've got x equals 120 take away 70 which is 50. So if x equals 50, x plus y equals 70. So I've got 50 plus y equals 70. So y equals 20. So here I've got x equals 50 and y equals 20. Now, one thing I would strongly recommend that you do is just make sure that you are, because your x and y values usually are in two different locations, make sure that when you're completing and writing it in the answer allocation spot, that you are writing it the correct way. Because obviously sometimes students would write their y value where the x value goes and their y value where the x value where the y value goes. So just be mindful of that. Moving on to question four, it says the graphs of y equals 4x plus 2 and 2x plus y equals 8 are shown. Use the graph to solve the simultaneous equations of y equals 4x plus 2 and 2x plus y equals 8. So here again, it should be relatively simple to this. It's basically the intersection point. So this point here is my x and this point here is my y. So x equals 1 and y equals 6. Now because it's rate to a graph, I would probably recommend that you write it as a coordinate. But if you did write it separately, that should be allowed as long as they're in close proximity in terms of your x and y value. Moving on to question five, it says solve the simultaneous equation. So again, looking at this, I've got the same number of y's, so and they're but the signs are different. So I add the two equations. So here I've got three x, the y's cancel out, and I've got seven plus two, which is nine. So that means that x equals three. So then taking the simpler of the two equations, I've got x plus y equals seven. I know that x equals 3, so therefore y equals 4. So then all I then need to do is just write those numbers in, and jobs are good in. Moving on to question 6, it says solve the simultaneous equation. So here, as you can see, looking at the x's and the y's, I haven't got the same number of x's or the same number of y's. So what I need to do, oh, actually, I've got the same number of y's. What am I talking about? So here, I'm going to then check to make sure that the y's are either the same sign or it's different, they're the same, so I take them away. So here, 2x take away 8x is minus 6x, and 13 take away 16 is minus 3. So then x is going to equal a half, and positive a half. So then using 2x plus 3y equals 13, well, 2x, 2 times a half is 1, so I've got 1 plus 3y equals 13 so 3y equals 12 so therefore y equals 4 so then x equals 0 0.5 or half whichever you prefer and y equals 4 moving on to question 7 so here we've got a worded question it says in a fish and chip shop two fish and one portion of chips cost £10.20 three fish and four portions of chips cost £19.80 and the question is asking me to work out the cost one fish and two portions of chips so let's first of all translate this into an algebraic expression. So I've got 2f 
plus 1c equals £10.20. And I've got, and I'm going to, now this one I'm just going to be a little bit coy. Because the second bill is more, I'm going to write that one above. So 3f plus 4c equals £19.80. So with this, as you can see, I haven't got the same number of f's or the same number of c's. So what I need to do then is multiply all the equations so that I've got the same. Now it makes more sense for me to get my c's the same because I can multiply 1 to get 4. So if I multiply all of that equation by 4, then what I end up with is 8f plus 4c equals, and it's £10.20 times 4, which is going to be £40.80. So if I then bring back the original one, and I'm writing that underneath because it's smaller, and then my C's are the same, they're both the same sign, so I take away. So 8F take away 3F is 5F. The C's cancel out, and £40.80 take away 19, it's going to give me an answer of 21. So then, what I've then got is F equals 21 over 5, which gives me an answer of £4.20. So a fish costs £4.20. So then using 2F plus 1C equals £10.20. Two fish is going to be £8.40. Plus chips equals £10.20. So the chips is going to cost £10.20 minus £8.40. Which gives me an answer of... I'm just trying to work that out of £1.80. Now I've not finished the question because the question has asked me if I go back what is the cost of one fish and two portion of chips. So one fish is going to be one times £4.20 plus two times £1.80. So this is going to be £4.20 plus £3.60 which comes up to a total of £7.80. Then moving on to question eight, it says on the grid below, draw the graphs of y equals 3x minus 1 and x plus 5 equals 5. So here with y equals 3x minus 1, well, I just need to pick two coordinates. Well, I know that it crosses the y-axis at minus 1, so there's one point. But again, when x equals 0, y is going to equal minus 1. So this is one point here. Then if I just make a nice easy point for x, so let's go for x equals 1, then y is going to equal 3 times 1, which is 3, take away 1, which is 2. So the next coordinate is going to be 1, 2. So that's that coordinate there. So if I then use the ruler to join those points up, and this is going to be a little bit frustrating, as it always is doing this on the computer, because it never matches up. Just extend that line so it goes through those two points. Hopefully yours will be a lot more accurate and a lot quicker than mine. So this line here is y equals 3x minus 1. Now for the next one, we've got x plus y equals 5. So when x equals 0, y is going to equal 5. So one corner is 0, 5. So 0, 5 is there. And when y equals 0, x is going to equal 5. So another coordinate is 5, 0, which is there. So all I then need to do is to draw a line that connects those two points together. And again, what you want to try and do is when you're drawing these lines, just make sure that it does cross the axes. Extend it a little bit further so it goes to the border of the graph or the squares that you've got. So there is my answer. So then what I then want to do is to solve this equation, which is basically these two bits here are the two lines that I've drawn, is I then need to solve this equation. So I make that x ordinate to be 1.5 and the y ordinate to be 3.5. So again, might be slightly off, but if you use your graph, it should be fine. So x equals 1.5 and y equals 3.5.
Moving on to question 8c, it says, are the solutions to the simultaneous equations 3x minus 1 and 3x plus 4 by referring to your graph or otherwise explain your answer? Well, there aren't going to be any solutions, and the reason for that is because there is no intersection point between these two lines as they are parallel. And if you remember, parallel lines do not meet. And if they don't meet, then there's no intersection points, which means there's no solutions. Then, so then moving on to question 9, it says solve the simultaneous equations. I've got 2x plus 4y equals 1 and 3x minus 5y equals 7. So again, what I notice straight away is that my x's aren't the same and the y's aren't the same. So what I'm going to need to do is multiply both the equations by a number so that I've got either x is the same or y is the same. I'm going to go for x is the same, so I'm going to multiply this first equation by 3 and the second equation by 2. So if I do that, I'm going to end up with 6x plus 12y equals 3, and I'm going to end up with 6x minus 10y equals 14. So then, as the x's are the same and the same sign, I take away the two equations. So 12 minus minus 10 becomes 22y, and 3 take away 14 gives me minus 11. So y is then going to equal minus 11 over 22, which is minus a half. So then, if I pick an equation, I've got 2x plus 4y equals 1. So I've got 2x plus 4 times minus a half equals 1. So 2x plus, and that's going to be minus 2, equals 1. So 2x is going to equal 3. And so x equals 3 over 2, or 1.5. So x equals 1.5, or 3 over 2. And y is going to equal minus 0.5, or minus a half. Then moving on to question 10, I uh, don't think we're ever going to get a quadratic equation, so I'll, I'll find one and I'll stick one on there because obviously I want to make this topic test as inclusive as I can. So looking at this is solve the simultaneous equation, we'll show you working out. Now as you can see, they're, both the equations I've got are not written in the format that I'm used to. I'm used to having my x's on one side and y's on one side and all the numbers on the other. So I need to do some rearranging in this particular equation. So from this, if I look at this equation, if I take the 6x over to the other side, I'm going to end up with minus 6x plus 2y equals minus 18. Now, if I bring back the first equation, so I've got 3x plus 4y equals minus 6. Now, you can see the x's aren't the same, the y's aren't the same. So what I'm going to do is decide whether I want to make the x's the same or the y's the same. I'm going to go for making my y's the same this time, so I'm going to multiply that second equation by 2. So what I end up with is 3x plus 4y equals minus 6, and then I'm going to end up with minus 12x plus 4y equals minus 36. Now I'm going to end up with lots of negatives, but as long as I do it correct and I'm being careful, it should be absolutely fine. So because the y's are the same sign, I'm going to take away the two equations. Now 3 minus minus 12 is 15 and minus 6 minus minus 36 is going to give me 30 so that means that x equals 2 so then picking one of the equations so let's go for this one here it doesn't really matter which one you go for so I've got 3x plus 4y equals minus 6 well that's going to equal 6 so I've got 6 plus 4y equals minus 6 4y equals minus 12 so y equals minus 3. So then my answer then is x equals 2 and y equals minus 3. Now apologies for not recognising that there were no non-linear and linear equa simultaneous equation questions on the topic test. So what I've done is just co collected three questions that will go through related to that particular side of simultaneous equations. Now, unfortunately, this is not on the topic test, so you will need to work off the screen if you're wanting to have a go at this question. So if you want to have a go at this question, just simply pause the video and then unpause when you're done. So looking at this particular question, well, the whole general method when you've got this is you've got one lin not linear equation, which is our top one, which just involves single x and single y's, and we've got a non-linear equation. Now, the general method is you want to make one letter the subject in the linear equation, which in this question, thankfully, it's already done for me because I've got y equals the subject. 
So what I then need to do is sub, or preferably not write with a highlighter. So then what I want to do is sub y in the linear equation with the y in the nonlinear equation. So here what I'm going to do is rather than using y, I'm going to swap this with y. So what I end up with is 9 minus x equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. So if I take all of this over to this side because I want to keep x squared positive, I get 0, 2x squared plus 4x, and I've got not 6, or that'd be 5x rather, then it'll be 6 minus 9, which is minus 3. I then need to make sure to check to see if this factorising, which it should, because there's no indication in the question that says give your answer to two decimal places. If it does, I need to use a quadratic formula. But generally speaking, more often than not, these types of questions will involve some factorising. So again, if I use a magic number way, just going a bit old school, we get two numbers that multiply together to equal minus six and added together to equal positive five. So here I'm looking at six and one, six and one, and I'm looking at positive six and minus one. So then replacing that, I get two x squared plus six x minus one x minus three equals zero. Then factorising the pairs, I get 2x, x plus 3, and then minus x plus 3 equals 0. So factorising this, I get 2x minus 1, and x plus 3 equals 0. So then x is going to either equal a half or minus 3. So then using the equation, once I've got this, then using y equals 9 minus x, when x equals 0.5, y is going to equal 8.5. And when x equals minus 3, then y is going to equal 12. Because 9 minus minus 3 tends to a plus become 12. So my answer is then going to look like x equals 0.5 y equals 8.5 make sure you make that sure that those two pairs are together or x equals minus 3 and y equals 12 and again make sure that those two pairs look like they're paired with each other then moving on to our next question so here it says solve the simultaneous equation again no indication about rounding so there's a good chance it's just going to be using um, factorizing to solve so again, I've got my linear equation, I've got y the subject, so no rearranging involved. So I'm going to swap the y in the nonlinear with x minus 3. So substituting that in, so y squared is going to look like x minus 3 squared equals 2x plus 29. Now if I expand this out, recognizing it double brackets, so it's x minus 3, x minus 3 equals 2x plus 29. So I get x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 2x plus 29. And I'm then going to take all of this onto this side. So I end up with x squared minus 8x plus minus 20 equals 0. Then factorize. So two numbers that multiply together give me 20. Added together give me minus 8. I'm looking at 10 and 2. And they are going to be, it's going to be minus 10 and positive 2. So then my x value is either going to equal minus 2 or 10. So then using y equals x minus 3, when x equals minus 2, y is going to equal minus 2 minus 3, which is minus 5. And when x equals 10, y is going to equal 10 minus 3, which is 7. So there are my two answers. Then moving on to the last question, it says prove algebraically that the straight line with the equation of x minus equals 2y plus 5 is a tangent to the circle with the equation of x squared plus y squared equals 5. So again, looking at the linear equation, I've got x as subject, so I'm going to swap x with 2y plus 5. So here I get, rather than writing x squared plus y squared equals 5, I'm going to write... 
2y plus 5 squared plus y squared equals 5. So then expanding the brackets out, I end up with 4y squared plus 20y plus 25 plus y squared equals 5. And I've just kind of jumped ahead just to save a bit of time, but that's basically what those two things equal each other. Then simplifying, I get 5y squared plus 20y plus 20 equals 0. Now at this stage, I should notice that I've got factors of 5. So if I divide everything by 5, both sides by 5, then 0 divided by 5 is just 0. I end up with y squared plus 4y plus 4. And then it's a case of then factorising this. So I've got y plus 2 y plus 2 equals 0. So y equals minus 2. And then when y equals minus 2, x is going to equal 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, plus 5 is 1. So then, as you can see, I've only got one set. So as we only have one coordinate, the line intersects, oh, if I can spell it, which clearly I cannot, oh, intersects the circle at one point only. And if a line meets a curve at one point only, so therefore it must be a tangent. And it's really important that you do write that statement, the fact that as there's only one solution, one intersection point, it means that the line, and it is a straight line, is going to be a tangent to that circle.